Alright guys, well I'm sure some of you by now have checked out this game, The First Descendant, and to be honest, I finally played it on my live stream on Friday night, I think it was, and it was decent. Um, I, I enjoyed parts of it, I definitely think the character models are fantastic looking, they are absolutely stunning, so no complaints there. There are some parts of the game that I don't feel were as good as, let's say, Warframe or even Destiny 2, but let's be fair, you know, it's a it's a free-to-play game, you know, it's a looter shooter with microtransactions. Everybody knows what you're getting when you go into that game. That being said, it managed to rack up over 10 million players in its first week. Absolutely staggering. And yes, I get it. Free games, easy access, you know, accessibility and all that good stuff. But that doesn't mean that everybody's going to play it. There are plenty of free games out there that people don't play because they're dog crap. This one is still maintaining a large player base, as we'll get to in a minute. Of course, it's been compared to Destiny 2 and Warframe, as you know, having very much similarities to both games. But I definitely think it doesn't necessarily excel in certain areas like Warframe did. I put a lot of hours into Warframe, and that game, I gotta tell you, even, even though the people behind that stu uh, the studio behind Warframe are very uh, <laughs> progressive, they managed to make a fantastic game despite that, so kudos on them. That being said, there has been some controversy around First Descendant as far as the accusations that they have basically copied and pasted things from Destiny 2. And you can see Paul Tassi, who none of us are big fans of here at this channel, but he does report on the fact that First Descendant apparently took some of the icons from Destiny 2 and used them in their own game with like barely any modifications. Now, there's been some contact, uh, context added into this. Apparently, Game Rant says, some fans additionally looked into what might have led to the incident. After a close investigation, users discovered evidence that suggested the developers behind First Descendant did not intend to steal the assets. Instead, it is believed the problem stemmed from Icon Duck, an online website that hosts thousands of free-to-use icons. And so, a lot of people, even content creators, fall into this. You'll find icons and images that are free to use. And sometimes they'll end up being closely related to things that are, you know, proprietary or copyrighted or whatever. That being said, this has been something where the media has been trying to blow this up into a huge controversy because you know that they are gunning for this game due to the fact that they have unapologetically incredibly hot characters, okay? None of this, you know, safe, horny, modernized crap like we get from Hades 2. None of the stuff that the Alyssa Mercantes of the world are going to be like, uh, just like creaming over. This is... A game for gamers, whether the game is good or not, is up to you to make your own opinion on that. So, that being said, a game that is not good, <laughs> that most people are underwhelmed with, that looked frightening from the get-go, that we knew was going to be just another copy-and-paste arena shooter, that is going to be dead on arrival, is Concord. Concord we have covered quite a bit on this channel, and uh, John Trent over at Park Place has this article talking about how apparently they drew less than 1,200 concurrent players at their peak during their closed beta over the weekend. Now, again, it's worth noting that that is only on Steam, and who knows how many people played it on PlayStation. I don't know, because it's a PS5 and PC game. That being said, less than 1,200 on Steam, that tells you right now that the player base is not going to be on the PC uh, market. As far as things go, you need to understand that this game, you could actually get a, a, a key to play the beta without even buying the game. They were giving out keys like to anybody who had pre-ordered the game for like 40 or $50 dollars as well as up to four additional keys to give out to your friends. So they were incredibly like desperate to try to drum up some player base for this game. And despite that, despite giving out keys to people who didn't purchase the, the game, you know, do a, a pre-order on it, to people who gave out all the keys to their friends and got people to try it out, like Endymion, and I know, uh, oh God, what's his name? Dread Roberts, he, he got a key, he played it, he wasn't impressed with it. Quite a few people, a lot of YouTubers covered this game. And despite all that, they managed to only get 1,124 people playing this game over a 24-hour peak. And it just dropped off the face of the earth right before they closed the beta. We'll get to that in a second. And Demion said, I tried the Concord beta to see if it could win me over. Here's the positives and negatives. Positives, it was a free beta. Graphically, it looks nice in cutscenes. Negatives, character movement feels sloppy. Maps feel lifeless and boring. No character felt good. And unfortunately, there's a lot of that, with, especially with arena shooters. Customization is basic, ugly character designs, feels like an add-on that would be attached to a more complete game, fights can snowball in one team's favor too easily, and of course pronouns. This is a game that once again, they featured the pronouns for all the characters, all the characters are hideous, I think there's no white male characters or maybe one, 
But of course, Endymion goes on to point out that you can either play the base, you know, Korean First Descendant game or the uh, Western Soy Concord design, which way Western man. And you can see that's just night and day. As a gamer, as a person who's going to be playing a game where you can actually see your character, whether it's in cutscenes, whether it's uh, in third person, would you rather look at something that's pleasing and easy on the eye or something that looks like Gorlock? I mean, I'm sorry, this is just completely insanely awful looking and all the characters like there are so many hideous character designs in this game and yet if you actually search concord on twitter there are some people who are defending this game we'll get into that in a second uh moshi moshi moan on here says in concord or hero shooter you'll learn character backgrounds with weekly cg movies that deal with the difficulties they face in life like anya the pirate and her battle with obesity or Darvis and his boyfriend that was physically abusive, obviously mocking all the social media or the uh, social commentary and politics put into the design of these characters. Um, and Demion says, I knew the Star Child character from Concord looked familiar to me. It's so similar to the Blood Brothers from the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Even the designers are derivative. This is pure slop coming from Sony, a game made for nobody. Man, it's pathetic to see. And again, you can see this big beastie looking dude here from Concord is virtually identical to this guy from the Guardians of the Galaxy game. So, I mean, pick, copy and pasting assets essentially is what it looks like. Then you have this one dude here. This one dude on Twitter is like, the character design in this game effing slaps. Oh my god. Everybody in the comments is completely destroying him. But the funny thing is, you go to his profile, and it's the same as everybody else you would expect. Dude sharing uh, reposts of people talking about how they wished the orange man hadn't survived over the weekend. Another person here saying, I like how the costume change animations in Concord tell a little story about the character in just a few seconds. This person works at Insomniac, okay? So don't even get me started. Insomniac, who I have no faith in that they will give you a decent game with good character designs and good gameplay at this point ever again. Now, again, we talked about Concord hitting a peak of 1,124 players. Now, if you look at the trajectory after that peak, it dropped off the face of the earth. I'm talking... Saturday at, uh, looks like, what, 9? You had 327 players playing it. And this is like, you still had hours left of the freaking beta. Okay, it never got above 700 players again before the beta closed once it hit this low right here. Absolutely embarrassing. If you go to First Descendant right now, however, and just look at the numbers right now, 120,000 people playing this game on a Sunday night after all the events of this weekend, which we're not even going to get into. Absolutely mind-blowing. So, do I think Concord is down on arrival? Hell yes. I think this game was made for the same audience that we saw when it came to that uh, Kinzara, Tales of Kinzara game. Which, again, I still stand on the fact that there's nothing wrong with making these games. You guys want to make these games with the non-binary characters and fill it full of pronoun nonsense and wokeness and make sure there's no white characters. Have at it. Go for it. Do not lecture us. Do not tell us that we're racist for not playing it. Do not call us bigots if we say, this isn't for me. Enjoy your game, play your game, and make millions of dollars. And then when you don't make millions of dollars, don't come back crying and whining at us that you think that we're racist and bigots because we didn't support your game. There can be games for everybody. The difference is the vast majority of people support good games. That's it. That's the difference. So let me know what you guys think about all this. Um, definitely make sure you check out the website. I've got lots of new articles on here over the weekend. Had a lot to go over. Got my live stream coming up Monday night, so I will see you guys there. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.